are there are some self-service drink stations with signs that say just for all inclusive but ain't nobody checking and everybody was just helping themselves welcome to the fuerteventura princess resort here on the island of fuerteventura off the coast of africa today i'm going to show you around the resort tell you some things that i think you need to know before you get here and show you a little bit of what we did while staying here for eight days in march of 2024 including tennis including hiking including going to the beach and more i'm morgan from the very unofficial travel guides i've been making travel videos for over 15 years of popular and not so popular tourist destinations to give you a very honest unofficial look at what it's like to be there and I also wrote a book with crazy travel stories things that have actually happened to me around the world it's called getting stitches on a cruise ship which actually happened to me and if this video helped you out in any way consider grabbing a copy because it's a great way to support what I do here on YouTube getting stitches on a cruise ship available on Amazon now okay let's take a look around this resort the Fuerteventura Princess Resort lies on the southeast side of the island between the Tui Magic Life and the Handia Princess. One of the most important things you should know about this and just about any other resort on this area of the island is it is not flat here. Staying here is a lot of walking up the hill, walking down the hill, walking up the hill, walking down the hill. To get from the lobby to the pool to the beach and back, you're going to be walking up and down a lot of hills and or stairs. But let's start with actually getting to the resort. I took a direct flight with Marabu Airlines from Hamburg, Germany, and there are many carriers that travel from major European cities directly to Fuerteventura. The airport is a little on the smaller side, but it's very modern. Wow, the bags got to the carousel before I did. That's quick. And my friend Andreas, who flew from Munich with Condor, was already there to meet me when I arrived. We hopped into our rental car and drove about 90 minutes down dusty roads to get to our island paradise home for the next eight days. If you don't want to rent a car, there are a few companies that offer pretty affordable shuttle services to almost all the resorts on the island. The first impression of the lobby when you get here is very spectacular. It is a gigantic open building. Reminds me kind of the Polynesian Resort, the Wilderness Lodge, Animal Kingdom Lodge at Disney. Just a huge open space with lots of sunlight coming in when the sun is shining. Reception is over here to the right. And if you book Essentia, which is like the top level all-inclusive, you have your own check-in area over here to the left. This main building houses not only the lobby and lobby bar, but also the main buffet restaurant where you can have breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and I'll be showing you a little more of the food later. On the lower level of the main building, you have some shops, the Match Point Sports Bar, which is sponsored by the tennis school at the resort, but only shows soccer matches, a pretty large arcade, and then the huge main bar and entertainment space called Halio, where they have the kids' mini disco at night, as well as a variety of other entertainment offerings that I'll also be talking about in just a little bit. Even though we were not traveling during any main school holiday periods, we were kind of surprised at how full the resort seemed. And we realized right away that it's very popular with families with smaller kids. Check-in took about a half an hour, and then we were off down the hill to our partial ocean view room in building five. The resort has several different buildings along a series of streets streets, starting with the Essentia upper class rooms at the top of the hill and moving down towards the beach. All of the rooms have either a balcony or outdoor terrace facing the coastline, but as I talked about in more detail in my room tour that's been online for about a week now, not all the balconies are the same. You see how some balconies are like open and some are closed? I was assuming that like the lower level is no view, the second level is partial ocean view, and then the highest level is always ocean view. But now I'm wondering if there's a difference even between the open balconies and the closed balconies because on our reservation, we have a partial ocean view, but from our room, you know, it looks like this. So even if you pay for an ocean view or partial ocean view. Still, for two adults, we had plenty of space and definitely more than in a standard cruise ship cabin. Like I said, if you wanna see the room in detail, check out the full tour linked in the description. After a quick unpack, we headed down to the Sea Rocco restaurant, which is the snack bar open during the afternoon hours of the day. They actually have a pretty big selection of hot and cold eats here that are included in the price of your stay. 
freshly baked pizzas, burgers, salads, fantastic garlic bread, cheese, fries, chicken nuggies, ice cream, as well as some self-service drink options. This garlic bread is so good. Great views from this restaurant. This is also new since the last time I was here. One sort of disadvantageous thing about this place is the birds. When you come out here and eat outside, I don't want to say you get attacked by birds, but there's definitely a lot of birds. And I've seen people feeding the birds and I just think, come on people, don't feed the birds at an outside restaurant that makes them come back. And you know, it's kind of nice to eat outside with this view and not have to be fending off birds and not have to have the tables be full of bird crap. You know what I mean? Don't feed the birds at outdoor restaurants, people. I beg of you. After our snack, we changed into tennis clothes and hit the courts, which is one of the main reasons that we decided to go to this resort. Andreas and I have both been playing tennis since we were teenagers, and you know, I play for a local club here in Hamburg, and we were looking forward to several hours of training and coaching during the week to improve our game before the competitive season begins back home in the summer. And while I noticed many improvements and updates in the resort itself during the last 12 years since I stayed here, unfortunately, I have to say the Match Point Tennis School left me a little bit disappointed this time. They were having some trainer drama at the time of our visit and one trainer quit with no notice, leaving only one person at the resort to take on every scheduled lesson. She was very competent and had a variety of drills prepared for us during the week, but I think that she was more of a better fit for people who are just learning tennis and not for advanced players like Andreas and I. On my past visits, it seemed like tennis was a really important thing to a lot of people who chose to stay at the resort. The courts were always booked. When they had the friendly tournaments, a lot of people showed up, and that was definitely very different this time. Maybe we just picked a bad week, but at one of the tournaments, only five people showed up. Now, these were all people who were good tennis players, but still, it's just different than the way it was the last time I was here. So if you are an advanced tennis player and really wanna focus on your game and improving your technique while you are on vacation, I'm gonna to have to recommend a different resort than the Fredaventura Princess. <sighs> Hot. That first night after dinner, there was kind of a quiz style variety show in the disco, but we ended up calling it a night pretty early because we were just wiped out from traveling and tennis. And as you may have seen in the hiking video I posted last week, we woke up to one of the very rare days of rain on the island. Fuerteventura is famous for its sunshine, so yeah, what are the chances that we would pick a rainy day to stay there? The rain let off pretty quickly, but the sun didn't really come out, and after an early lunch, we decided to take a hike up Mount Aguda behind the resort. This small mountain is only about 1,000 feet or 300 meters from top to beach, and it was a medium strenuous hike with some really great views of the volcano-y landscape and squirrels from the top. There are pretty clearly marked paths, so if you're interested in making the trek to the top, I would say go for it. I made a whole video about it, which you can also find in the library. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner are all served in the main Food market is what it's called. That is the buffet at the resort. Just like on major cruise ships, there are a variety of stations serving hot and cold food. And if you're a fan of freshly prepared meat, chicken and seafood, you are going to love the meals here at the Fuerteventura Princess Resort. As someone who eats vegetarian, I also found a lot of tasty things, and if you're very specific about eating gluten-free, vegetarian, or vegan, you can fill out a survey at check-in, and they will make a special meal just for you. Here's one thing about the buffet that seemed kind of weird to me, though. A lot of times, the signs listing what the food was supposed to be were wrong, meaning that what was listed was not what the food was that was underneath the sign. Like, check this out. I mean, this is very obviously not risotto. And here's another thing that I found kind of disappointing. When you book at the Fuerteventura Princess Resort, you can choose different levels of, what would you call it? 
things that are included. So you can have half board, which includes two meals a day, full board, which is three meals a day, and then all inclusive like we had, which includes all the meals and then also alcoholic drinks, which are not included in the other packages. So we paid extra for all inclusive and you can see in the buffet and the snack bar, there are some self service drink stations with signs that say, just for all inclusive, but ain't nobody checking. And everybody was just helping themselves. And it made me think, why did I pay extra for this if everybody is getting it anyways? You know what I mean? That was kind of disappointing. Now, if we went to the bar by the pool or in the disco or the sports bar at night, we did have to show our all inclusive bracelet to get a drink without having to pay for it. But if you're somebody who's considering staying here and you're not sure if you want to do all inclusive or not, and you only like to have maybe like one cold beer at the pool in the afternoon and a glass of wine with dinner, and after that you're fine, then definitely don't get all inclusive because you can just take it anyways. It's kind of only if you're gonna be drinking a lot of cocktails or mixer drinks or after dinner, if you know you're gonna be wanting to have several rounds of drinks before you go to bed. Those are the people who it does make sense to book all inclusive. But how do you guys feel about this? About them charging extra for a service that most people are just kind of getting anyways? Let me know in the comments. And speaking of grabbing drinks, another thing I noticed here at the bars is there are no servers walking around so when you want to get a drink or a round of drinks you have to go to the bar and get it yourself and depending on what time you get there you may be waiting in quite a big line you know in the end waiting in the line might take just as much time as it does if you wait for somebody to come to your table take your order go away get the order and bring it back to you but just when you think of this being a four-star resort I would think four stars means that they also have table service. On some nights, there is live music out in front of the sports bar in addition to the indoor entertainment. And I've talked about this in other videos as well, but compared to the major cruise ships, the entertainment at the resort is somewhat on the amateur level. That doesn't mean it wasn't entertaining and enjoyable, but if you're cruising with Disney or Royal Caribbean, the shows are a major highlight. And here at the Princess Resort, it was more of just like something to do before going to bed and something to keep the kids occupied. As far as the live performers go, there was a magician whose show was at a much higher level than all the other acts, so... Just wanted to mention that. That was kind of a highlight. The next few days were a mix of tennis training, tennis tournaments, and hanging out at the pool and beach. The resort is directly on the beach, but it's a short walk down the hill to actually get to the water. If you head to the right or south towards the Tui Magic Life and ultimately the city of Moro Habla, it's kind of rocky and rough. But if you head to the left, or north, there is a long stretch where it's nice and sandy and smooth. Just FYI, as far as clothing goes here, it's kind of everything goes. Some people have their clothes on, some people have their clothes off. You're kind of gonna get that everywhere on the Canary Islands. There is a lot of naked skin happening. And there's pretty much a constant wind on the island, but if you get to the beach early, you can grab one of the stone rings and set up camp inside to sizzle in the sun and have a nice little bit of privacy as well. And what would a luxurious resort be without a bunch of pools? This is the door to the beach. You'll need your key card to get back inside. And if I turn to the right here, there's also sort of an enclosed beach area here that only belongs to the resort. And down there is the one of the entrances to the adults only area. I think many resorts around here have an adults only area and this is something I really enjoy. It's sort of like the quiet area until somebody brings their freaking Bluetooth speaker and plays their own music. But anyways, at least there's no screaming kids. I like kids and I like music, but it's also nice to just have an area where it's quiet. Can't we, can't we have quiet too every once in a while? I am up at literally the break of dawn to film this area for you. This is the adults only area. When I first came to this resort, this area was a little bit smaller and it was also the um, nudist area. So I think it was clothing optional, but most people who hung out here were without clothing. 
And these three or four windows back there, that is the spa area with the saunas and steam room. Let me explain it to you. The entrance is on this side, and then the first sauna is with clothes, and then there is a steam room, and that is also with clothes. And then the third sauna is with no clothes. So I think some countries who come here prefer to go in the sauna with clothes, and that would be the first two. And the third one is for people who are used to going in the sauna without clothes, where you just sit on your towel. Since I've been in there, it's been mostly people from Germany, and that's how we do it there. This then is the great big pool area. That's the furthest down, has these structures over here. And during the day, there's actually waterfalls coming down from there. And underneath there is where the fitness studio is, the gym. In the middle, when I first started coming here, that was like a gazebo bar. And now it's kind of like the teens area with a little chill out lounge and some uh, table tennis tables. This view is just amazing. I keep having to like just stop and look at it myself. Sorry, it's distracting me from showing you around. But just remember that at least now, this pool, as beautiful and big as it is, is not heated and it's really refreshing. I think that's a nice way to say it. This pool is refreshing. So just keep that in mind. What's it like living here? Are the other cats nice to you? Hope so. This pool is a little bit higher, or I don't, depending on how you look at it, a little bit less further down. And this is kind of like the family and children's pool area. You can see there's a pirate ship and splash area back there. This pool here in the front, at least at the moment when we are here in uh, March 2024, this pool is the only pool that's heated. And the big pool that's lower down is not heated. The resort also has a kids club with organized activities like this pirate adventure we saw. The kids were absolutely loving this and it looked like the staff was having a good time too. I guess it's a great way to get some peace and quiet during the day so mom and dad can have some alone time. Another service that you can find at the resort that you will also find on cruise ships is professional photography. So if you wanna get some professional family photos taken or maybe engagement photos, something like that, there is a professional photographer working at the resort, but unlike on cruise ships where they're just kind of set up at night and you can go get your picture, here you have to make an appointment and then they will take you around. And uh, we did see quite a few people taking advantage of this and the resort does offer some really beautiful backgrounds. And one of the highlights of our final few days in addition to making it really far in one of the tennis tournaments and winning a pretty cool t-shirt. This is the t-shirt I won from being in the tennis tournament. So it's a pretty nice little prize. A lot of times, you know, you just win like a lanyard or something, which I did win in the first tournament, but uh, the second one, I made it a little bit further. So I got this nice t-shirt. Can you see the back? It's crooked, isn't it? It's not centered. Oh well. It was basically free, so not complaining. Anyways, we also did another really spectacular hike through the Barranco de las Panitias Canyon and up to the Instagram famous Arco de las Panitias. This was a half day trip that involved a lot of ups and downs, as well as some free hug opportunities. And that entire video will be coming soon, so make sure you're subscribed and check back if you wanna see about all that. On the final day, we checked out at 11 a.m., lugged our suitcases up the hill, although they do offer a luggage service, got into the rental car, stopped at the big supermarket across the street to pick up some Spanish snacks and mojo sauce, and then we hit the road back to the airport. We returned the rental car on time, found a little stowaway in our bags, and then we found out that my flight had been delayed. I didn't make it home that night until shortly before midnight. Altogether, our actual stay at the resort was very enjoyable. And for just around $750 per person all inclusive, we got a lot for a small budget. Yes, the tennis was disappointing and left a bad taste in my mouth upon our departure. And I know you might be saying, well, Morgan, if tennis was your main focus, why didn't you go to like, Robinson Club or Club Med or to the Nadal Academy on Mallorca. Those were options that we explored. Some of them were in the budget, but 
just based on my previous experience at this resort, the tennis was much better in the past. So I based my decisions and my expectations on the experiences I had there before and was unfortunately disappointed by that, but now I know going forward. If you wanna have huge pools, great food, a direct beach location, mountains to climb, and you don't really care about tennis or you're more of a beginning tennis player, then this is a fantastic resort for you and I can definitely recommend it and in that case, would also stay there again. Let me know if you're considering staying here. If you have any further questions or you think I missed something, make sure you hit that thumbs up before you go, and I hope to see you back here soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>